Hi guys, it's Liz here from BioViva, and today we're going to talk about genes. Uh, I'm really excited about this topic. Maybe most of you know what they are. There's something you either wear on your legs or there's something that inside your body. They actually, they're both. So uh, hang out with me today and let's talk about genes. So a gene is a physical and functional unit of heredity. Uh, it's made of DNA, so that's your A, T, C's, and G's. And um, essentially, uh, you get half of your genes from your mother and half of the genes from your father, and they essentially define you. So a gene codes for proteins, and those proteins make who you are. About 25,000 of them do anyway. A bunch of genes are silent, and we used to think that they didn't do anything but we found out that they do. Some are regulating genes, uh, some have to do with uh, the, the cell's regulation in general. And so we're learning more and more about genes every day. So there's different variations in genes and we look for these in what's called SNPs. They're just single letter changes in a gene and they might define your both your health benefits or your risk for a certain disease. So when you have your genome analyzed, uh, they're essentially looking at these small variations. Where are you different and how do these variations actually add up. There's something called a GWAS study, and those are global studies that look at these little variations in genes to associate the risk of that single nucleotide having a different letter, maybe in you it's A and maybe uh, in me it's G, um, and, and actually verifying your risk based on that single simple change. One fun way to look at genes is how they define you. So some of them actually code for your eye color, your hair color, your skin color. They sort of set the mark to differences that help me identify you as being a different person. And then some genes, again, many of the genes in all of us are the same and they're coding for similar proteins. Some might be more expressed in some individuals and less expressed in others. So in some cases, people have a single gene mutation that is actually very devastating. And this is what causes monogenic disease, meaning one gene has a problem. And we might see this like hemophilia B, we might see this in sickle cell anemia, we might see this in severe combined immunity disorder. What happens is there's a dysfunctional copy of the gene, it's making an incorrect protein and that therefore is making the body sick. These now have become some of the most searchable type of gene uh, consequences and right now in gene therapy there's a lot of technology that's going through the pipeline to help these diseases which is really exciting. But what happens when you have a, a problem that's a multi-combinatorial issue? So what happens when we have a multigenic disorder? A disorder that maybe means that I or you get heart disease sooner, that puts us at higher risk of cancer uh, or kidney failure. Well, these are complex issues, and this is when we need to look at genes, the whole genome as a whole. What genes are affecting this condition and how can we then affect that condition with gene therapy. Some of the diseases that we're afflicted with like rheumatoid arthritis or type 2 diabetes could be affected by our genes. They could put us at greater risk but they can also be affected by our environment and how we treat our body. So actually pulling the two ideas apart of what is our genetic risk and what is our environment and something that we can be in control of, it will be a really important way to move forward into precision medicine. That's why we want to look at, at BioViva, we want to look at everything about you. We want to look at all your ohms. We want to see the environment you're living in, what you eat, what your genome looks like, what your microbiome looks like, which is the, the bacteria, the gut bacteria and virome in your stomach, and assess what your risk is based on that. So when you get your genome analyzed, you know, a lot of people are actually very scared uh, of the results. Uh, so you may have a predisposition to a disease, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get it. So you may have genes that are associated with breast cancer, but never actually um, be diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, you may have genes associated with Alzheimer's, but it's just a percentage risk. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get it. So that's why, 
Patient advocacy uh, in genomic counseling is really important. We don't want you to leave you with a test that you don't know what it means. Uh, we don't want to leave you hanging and, and wonder what your susceptibility is because you have been red flagged that you have specific genes. We all have a genome that is accumulating damage over time. We have a body that's accumulating damage over time. And right now, uh, without serious intervention, we know that everyone on the planet will die of the diseases of aging. So these are the reasons that we would look into this technology, see what these gene risks are, and see how we can actually change it for the future of humanity. The exciting thing about genes is that all living things on this planet have them. And I call it the phylogenic grocery store. So why would I call it that? Well, genes are technology. They literally are technology that we can translate from one organism to another organism. Uh, when you look out there, whether it be a tree, a plant, a dog, a cat, a human, we're all made of A, T, C, and G genes. And the, the different permutations and combinations of those genes are what are actually defining the differences in those species. So you may not want to look like a dog, a cat, or a, a tardigrade, one of the extremophiles, but the tardigrade is resistant to uh, radiation and boiling water and all sorts of things that kill our cells. And when you put one gene called damage suppressor into human cells, they actually heal faster. If we look at some of the creatures in the ocean, they see in billions of colors instead of the millions of colors that we see in. So that's technology that in the future we might be able to adopt from a wide range of sources. But most importantly, I want you to think when you go out and you see anything that is living, anything that is alive as we know it, as an organism that can reproduce and, and metabolize, they're only made of genes. And um, that is our connection to everything on this planet that is living, and that's really exciting. It gives us an unlimited future of technology. Today, mostly in gene therapy, uh, um, over 99% of it is just using human genes that already exist in human cells and upregulating them. So we deliver a gene that actually upregulates a protein that is just a human protein. But did you know that the genes from light sensing algae have already been used in people with retinitis pigmentosa? Uh, so the idea of taking genes from somewhere else and putting them into our body um, is not a new idea and it's already been accomplished. So these are really exciting times. So if you like what you heard today and you want to find out more about yourself and what we're doing and how we're designing your future, visit us here, like us, share, and follow our links.